Church, happy Easter. We are so excited to be with you today, wherever you are. And we just want to give him praise and glory and worship him this morning. We're going to start this off a little bit lively, so hang on and get a good breath. I will see.
Father, we're so grateful that because of your dying, your sacrifice, and your rising from the dead, Father, we can have life with you now, more abundantly, and for all eternity. Father, we're so blessed to be worshiping you today, Father. We're just so overwhelmed, Father, with the emotions, the understanding, Father, of what you did. We just come to celebrate. Thank you.
thank you that when you were staying in that garden, you were you were sweating drops of blood. You were asking the Father if there was any way to take this blood from you. That you just gave in to the will of the Father and you chose to go to the crossroads and endure something that none of us could ever understand. Jesus, you did it. In your word, it says, if I were the only person on this planet, you did it for me. But Jesus, we thank you not just for that death on the cross, but we thank you so much for the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that resurrected you from the grave, the power that leaves that tomb empty. And so today, we just pray over every, everybody that's watching this telecast, everybody here, that we would just live in that power. That even though when we're afraid and we're not sure, God, that we would put your will above ours. That we would live boldly in the resurrected power of your son, Jesus. We thank you so much for loving us. We just want to worship you today.
Praise be to God. Amen. Brother Grant, we are ready for a lesson, Brother Grant. Well, good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If I were to say to you this morning, He is risen, what would you say? He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we welcome you to this Easter edition of uh, coronavirus uh, live stream services. We appreciate so much your faithfulness and your presence. I was... Uh, I want to share with you my gratitude for the way you've responded and you have um, watched us, you joined us, you worship with us online. It's a kind of a new experience for us, but we appreciate so much your faithfulness and we appreciate your comments and sharing with us that you're involved in watching the services. We appreciate that so very much, more than you can imagine. You're a, we just really appreciate you. and Thank you so much for, for being so faithful and, and joining us. We also want to thank you for the way you have uh, continued to financially support the church. Uh, Brother Scott just mentioned a moment ago uh, how you, the ways you give to the church during these, these times of, uh, of our separation, though we are separated in uh, first perhaps spatially with social distancing. We are not separated in the spirit, and we appreciate so much what you're doing as far as not only your presence online, but also we appreciate very much the way you have faithfully continued to support the church financially. We appreciate that so much. Well, it's all about Jesus today. It's all about the resurrection, and we want to share some thoughts with you today. I want to share a sermon entitled, Make Up Your Mind. Make Up Your Mind, and I want to actually share with you two passages of the Scripture. One of them will be found in Luke, the, the second chapter, and beginning with verse 8. And then we'll also be sharing with you some scripture that you will find in the Gospel of Matthew as well, in Matthew, the 28th chapter. But I want to begin reading with the Word of God in Matthew and Luke, the second chapter, beginning with verse 8. But before I do that, I want to ask you to listen carefully. After all, this is the reading of God's holy. It is His inspired and His inerrant Word. This is the Word of God for the people of God. In Luke, the second chapter, beginning with verse 8, we read these words. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a, a host of the multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And so it was. And the angel had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Obviously, that's a story about the birth of Jesus. Probably not something you expected to hear this morning on Easter Sunday. But now I want to share with you the story about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guard, guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a faint, dead faint. And then the angel spoke to the women. Do not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. 
He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. They ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Would you take just a moment to bow your heads and close your eyes, and would you pray for me as I pray with you? Gracious God, I pray that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross so that these, your people, would hear your voice above mine and so that they might discern the difference between the wisdom of God and the knowledge of a man. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let them be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you alone, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Come, Holy Spirit, just have your way in us and through us and in spite of us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would not give us the luxury of remaining the same as we were when we came in or as we began to listen to the service today. But God, I pray that when all is said and done, this day of resurrection, God, I pray that we will be different for the sake of Christ and that we will go forth and tell other people about Jesus about the one who made, has made all the difference in our life. And Lord, in this prayer, I pray in the precious and perfect and in the powerful name of Jesus, who is called the Christ. And let all God's people say, Amen. Well, I want to spend some time with you on the subject of today about making up your mind. I want to talk about these angels for just a moment. Those angels they have always seem to have a way of, of showing up at the most miraculous of times. In fact, they were on site when, when at the very moment that two of the greatest miracles, in fact, the two greatest miracles in the history of the world happened. They were present at the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus literally split history down the middle from from. B.C. to A.D., Anno Domine. The birth of Jesus split history down in the middle and the angels were there. Again, the second event, two of the, two, the two greatest events in the history of the world, the angels were there at the second event as well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the moment in history that connected the, the present to the future that connected the, the here and now to the hereafter forever. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, when you first read about these two great miracles, you wonder sometimes if the angels, it seems as though they just can't make up their mind about Jesus. The two events occurred about 33 years apart. Now, at his birth, the angel was saying, he's here. He's finally here. But at the resurrection, the angel says, he is not here. At both events, at his birth and resurrection, the first words out of the angel's mouth was, Fear not. Do not be afraid. Because in both miracles, both, there were folks there who were afraid. The shepherds were afraid. The guards and the women, they were afraid. I would be afraid too. You see, I think that's something that we have lost, uh, uh, we have lost in our culture today. A healthy a respect or, or, or a healthy respect for the miraculous movement of God in human history. But at the birth of Jesus, in this little town of Bethlehem, there was a cry of a 
baby boy being born. And it literally not only split history down the middle, but it split the, the Mid-Eastern sky. And then, and then, there was the Bible that tells us that the shepherds were minding their own business and the cry of the baby rang out. There were the shepherds who were just minding their business, just like we often do every day, going about our business. In fact, the Gospel of Luke tells us in the second chapter, now there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel appeared to them. And then at his birth, at his birth, the angel's message, the angel's message was, he's here. He's finally here after hundreds of years of prophecy and preaching and praying and waiting and watching. He is finally here. But in his resurrection, the angel's message was just the opposite. Do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He is not here. But we know the rest of the story. Because the Bible says he is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. And then the angels shared some more good news that they told him that you'll see him again. You'll see him again. And then Mary and Mary ran quickly to the tomb. They ran quickly. They had ambivalent feelings, apparently. They were very frightened, but they were also filled with a great joy. I think it reminds me of something else I read in a book called The Bible one time about another great miracle, about the birth of Jesus. And the angel said, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For of you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So they ran quickly with ambivalent feelings. They were frightened, but yet they were full of great joy. It was almost like the Marys couldn't make up their mind to be frightened or to be filled with joy. Or maybe it was that the Marys had already made up their mind about Jesus Christ. And he had made all the difference in their lives. I was sent those ladies ran quickly from the tomb because they were just dying to tell the apostles the good news that the angel had shared with them, that Christ was risen. Just like the shepherds couldn't wait when they heard about the Savior's birth. They couldn't wait and they had to leave where they were to see that miracle that had happened. So the ladies ran because he had made a miraculous difference in their lives. He, he had done a miracle. Jesus had done a miracle in them. You see, that meant Jesus Jesus is a man of miracles, wasn't he? Jesus didn't just do miracles, things like healing the leprous, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the dead, raising the dead. Jesus didn't just do miracles, but Jesus was a miracle from the very beginning. He was born of the Virgin Mary. Why, well, that seems to be an impossible thing. He was a miracle. The Immaculate Conception of Christ, the Son of God. And then he was raised from the dead on the third day. Another miraculous resurrection. Somewhere along the line, those two Marys had already made up their minds about Jesus Christ. It's sort of like the hymn we sing a lot in the church. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And no turning back. Now I want to say to you today. There are three things. At least three things that come out of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One of the first things is. Bruce Asher said that the, 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 re the resurrection reveals Jesus as the final authority on all matters of life and death. He is the final authority in the world. Not governmental leaders, not political leaders, not sports stars, not movie stars, not unbelievers, not infidels, not pagans, not heathens. 
But Jesus is the final authority. In fact, when Jesus appeared to his followers immediately after his resurrection, the first words out of his mouth was in Matthew, the 28th chapter, I have all authority, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Jesus is going to have the final word on all matters. In fact, we say in the Apostles' Creed, that he will come to judge the living, the quick, and the dead. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he said, there'll come a day when we recognize that. There'll come a day that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's a second thing that comes out of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a systematic body of Christian ethics, biblical ethics of morality, that is distinctly Christian because he was the Christ. He was the Messiah. Jesus said to it, and Jesus says to us today, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do as I say? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, I've got to ask you a question today. How is the world standards working out for you? How's the world standards working out for you? then why not try Jesus? Here's the third thing that comes out of the resurrection. The resurrection of his believers. His resurrection connected the, the here and now with the hereafter, the present with the future. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he die, and, and, and he that believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Paul says in his letter, the first letter to the Corinthians, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then if there is no resurrection, then Christ has not been raised from the dead. And if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then our faith is, is useless. But he said Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And because he has been raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. We shall live forever. Now I want to be bold enough to ask you some questions this morning. Have you made up your mind about Jesus Christ? And if not, why not? And if not before, why not now? I mean, has Jesus Christ come to you or not? Is he here today alive with you or not? Is, is he, do you trust him or not? Is he, do you have faith in him? Do you follow him or not? Jesus is a, was a man, is a man of miracles. His birth and his resurrection are proof positive of that. And he's still a man of miracles. One of my favorite songs, and one of my favorite singers, who's now gone, his name was Don Williams. He sang a song entitled, Ain't It Amazing? He said, Ain't it amazing that miracles happen? Ain't it amazing that we can still find our dreams? Ain't it amazing that someone like you can happen to someone like me? Folks, Ain't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that someone like Jesus could happen to you and happen to me? Now I imagine there's some folks today that need some miracles in their life. I suspect there are people that need miracles of healing in their life, physical healing, emotional healing. There are folks today that, that, that need the physical and emotional healing. And I want to say to you today, I give testimony today that the Jesus is still the great physician and he's still the wonderful counsel the prophet Isaiah shared about. He's still a man of miracles. I like the song we used to sing a long time ago. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. There are folks today I know there are, that are broken and buried in a lot of different ways. You remember the theology of that um, nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty had a great, a sound of all Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. I confess to you today, we live in a world of skepticism, don't we? I read once upon a time, I read a sign from the time that said Humpty Dumpty was pushed. <laughs> we're not skeptics, we're people who believe 
And we believe that sure, surely there are people that are broken. And, and, and someone once said, well, that was the problem with Humpty Dumpty. He went to all the king's horses and all the king's men. And, and, and I wish I could remember who first said that. I will give them credit for it this morning. But they brought up a very good point in saying that. He said, so what if the king's horses and king's men couldn't put Humpty together again? I bet you the king could. And he still can. There are people today, right now, that need hope in their lives more than ever before. There are people whose marriages are in trouble. There are, there are people today whose finances are in, in, in a state of array right now, in disarray. There are people whose, whose children are, are in, in a great concern to them right now, or maybe just the parents are a great concern to the children. I think about one of my favorite books written by a friend of mine, his name is James Banks. He also writes for our daily devotion called Our Daily Bread. And he's written a number of books on the subject of prayer. And I commend him to you today. Just don't tell anybody. I've been reading uh, uh, books by a Presbyterian preacher, but I'm a Methodist. But let me just tell you, this man loves the Lord. he got a heart for prayer. And one of his favorite, my favorite books I read three or four times is Prayers for Prodigals. Because I know there are people that are broken in relationships today. Prayers for prodigals. There are people today who need salvation. They need to be saved from themselves. They need to be saved from hell to heaven. They need to be saved from each other. There are people today that need salvation. Paul and Silas were in a prison one time. And God sent a great earthquake and the doors of the prison flew open and, and, and the chains fell off and and the, and, the, and the jailer thought they had escaped. He was about to take his own life. And they said, we're still here. And they began to testify, testify to him about Jesus Christ. And finally, he asked that question, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus, and, and Paul and Simon said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. There are people today who need to be saved. I want to ask you a question today. Where is your need for a miracle? Jesus is still a man of miracles. Have you made up your mind where you need, most need that miracle in your life today? Let me pray with you about that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with a simple childlike faith. Father God, I come to you right now, believing you, that you're going to do great and marvelous and miraculous things. I pray for those that are broken in spirit, broken in heart, broken in relationships. Lord, I pray for those today that need the touch of the Master. Lord, that need a miracle in their lives, and I pray for it for them. Father God, I pray for those who are lost and undone, and I pray that they, this, this sweet, that simple, childlike prayer of faith would be on our lips and our hearts in this resurrection today. Lord Jesus, I pray that the prayer of our heart be, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are God's Son. I believe that you rose from the grave that I might have eternal life. And, I, and I, Lord, I thank you for the gift of salvation. I, I repent of my sins and I come to you in simple childlike faith. And I give all that I know about myself to all that I know about you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and give me the boldness to share with somebody today that I've made that decision. Father God, I just thank you so much for your grace and your love and your mercy. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving me and thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing my brokenness. Thank you for restoring what, what the locust have eaten in my life. Lord, I ask all of this in the priceless and the perfect and powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the risen Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join us as we conclude our service in song. We're going to finish out strong. We're going to finish out in song. God bless you. You're welcome to let us hear from you here uh, online. We're glad to hear if we can help you in any way to Edward United Methodist Church. You can find us on our website here in Phoenix City at the Edward United Methodist Church in Phoenix City, Alabama. God bless you. Keep your hands in Jesus' hands and your eyes on the cross.
bless us. That he has covenanted us and promised us. Yeah.
Scripture God in number 625 says, The Lord bless you to keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all pray. Amen. God bless you.